Am I crazy? <laughs> um, no, I'm excited. For more than two months, the only names at the bar have been Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, and Tito. But that's all changing. Three, two, one. The lights are back on at Brady's Bar in downtown Traverse City, one of the only ones in town that's open. A lot of places, I think, have said that they know a lot of people are coming up from downstate and they don't want to risk their staff. And um, my staff is taking the precautions that are necessary. Brady's does have some new rules for this new world. They don't want you to come in if you're not feeling well. And if you're not from northern Michigan, well, they're asking you just to stay away for now. If you live in a section that hasn't been opened yet, there is still a stay-at-home order, and we're asking that you respect that we are open and those sections aren't. We'd like to keep it as local as possible. At Brady's, 50% capacity means no more than 42 people inside. About 30 were ready to come in at midnight and lay their money on the bar. We saw that Brady's was opening, and they're trying to be as safe as possible about it, so we decided to come here tonight and check it out and see what it's going to be like, I guess. I'm just hoping people are receptive to the fact that we have to make changes. Feels great. Spent two months locked in an apartment. There's a pep in the step of the wait staff and service with a smile, even if you can't see it under their face masks. It's a breath of fresh air. It's like the world coming alive again. In Traverse City, I'm Bill Fraley for Michigan This Morning. This is the scene of a typical summer day at Peterson Beach, but the afternoon of July 25th was anything but typical. Initially, the report was that a five-year-old child was on a raft and that she was blowing away from the mother. A little girl tethered to an inflatable toy raft when the tether came loose and the girl slipped, drifting out into Lake Michigan. For first responders, the scene was accessible only by nearly two miles of rough gravel road and another 200 yards of sandy trail. You're looking at 10 to 15 minutes before we can even be to Peterson Beach, let alone have a vessel in the area. Already in the water, Justin Perry saw the girl struggling. Just really felt that that little girl needed help. That was the, the main thing. It was, became apparent when she was flipped off of the floaty that something needed to happen and it needed to happen quickly. Jason Hadfield saw the commotion from shore and also jumped into action. You know, I was fighting against the waves, the wind, and you know, he got there and turned around with her. Once I got to her, I put my arm around her and just told her that it was going to be okay, that we we're, uh, we we're going to get her to shore. I couldn't believe she was breathing. It was put her on the kayak and then we both kind of swam back to shore. Both men received life-saving awards from the Sheriff's Office and the National Park Service. It doesn't usually end this way, um, but by the grace of God, these two gentlemen were there and they sprang into action. My first words to those gentlemen were, you guys are heroes, and I still feel that. To this day, there were a lot of people along the beach that day, and there were only two individuals that entered the water. In Benzie County, Bill Fralick, 9 and 10 News. I'll just come right out and say it and be brutally honest. Um, I have COVID-19. A month ago, nurse Hannah Borsvald was exposed to the coronavirus. I was pretty positive that I was going to have a negative screen based on the limited of time that I was around this um, person. Excited about the birth of her sister's baby, Hannah got tested as a precaution. After testing positive, Hannah wanted to document the experience in these videos. Um, I myself am curious about how this virus progression is going to go. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous or scared. Hannah says she developed a sore throat, headaches, congestion, muscle aches, and a loss of taste and smell. All of the symptoms I had yesterday are progressing. I still can't taste or smell anything. But she never had a fever and her symptoms didn't last. Today I woke up feeling pretty darn good. I can feel every day um, a difference. And then the best day of isolation, meeting her niece through the window. Hi. <laughs> Hi, baby. She says the emotional toll was tougher than any physical symptoms. Big family moments that are passing you by and the time's just ticking until you can be there and and be a part of that, so that got really tough. And there were moments of fear. I didn't tell people that I did pack a hospital bag because I wasn't sure how scared I needed to be. But now two weeks of isolation are over. Hannah has recovered, hugged her brand new niece, and also added another item to her to-do list. I've applied to be a plasma donor. They assume that my plasma has antibodies that can fight off the disease for really sick patients. In Grand Traverse County, Bill Fralick, 9 and 10 News.